Good morning. And welcome to another gathering of the remnant. Come, let us go to the ninth chapter of the gospel according to Luke. Chapter 9. And we're going to start at the first verse. If you're ready, say amen. I'll be reading from the New International Version. The Word. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra tunic. And whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. But if people do not welcome you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave their town as a testament against them. So they set out and went from village to village, preaching the gospel and healing people everywhere. So ends the reading of God's word, but never the power contained therein. I would like to return to the third verse heard in our reading. He told them, take nothing for your journey. No staff. No bag, no bread, no money, no extra tunic. And from the text heard in our reading, I ask you to consider a message entitled, Testify. Testify. Say that after me. Testify. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Amen. There was a time in my life which I was not real sure about God what God could do and who God was. And I found my way living in Rochester, New York, where I was blessed to meet my future wife. We attended a church, and the church we attended to was a, a little storefront church that had been very old and broken and it had a hole in the floor, in the middle of the floor. So when you walked in and the choir walked in, they had to walk around the hole to get up into the choir loft. The pastor was one of the first people that really taught me or showed me the, the importance of loving his or her community. And it meant so much to me. We would talk for hours, all during the night. He was also a superintendent or educator at, at one of the school's central office areas in Rochester. And at that time, he saw something in me, I guess, that I didn't see in myself. And he ordained me as a deacon. We would have conversations and we would talk on the phone. And every now and then he would ask me if I had something that I wanted to say uh, to the people of the church. And I would go, no, no, I, I, I'm good, I'm good. I never thought myself to be, quote, unquote, a, a Jesus freak. Somebody that was, you know, just the holy roller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just wasn't who I was. 
And there was a, an associate pastor at the church, and he was an older gentleman. And every time he got up to either read a scripture, pray a prayer, or even preach, he always ended up talking about how he was in the military and he got shot in the head. And he knew for a very moment that he was shot that he was going to die. And for some reason or another, he didn't die, and he wound up getting a metal plate placed in his head. And every time he got up to speak, he would always reference the fact, and he would hold his head where it was, and he would just talk about the fact of how good God was to him because he allowed him to live when he knew he was supposed to die. And every Sunday or every time he had the opportunity to speak or talk or pray or read, everybody in the church knew that he was going to go back to that same sermon, that same testimony. And after a while, people would, in the church, they went, when he get up there, they roll their eyes or give him the side eye like, oh, here we go again. But he would always tell that story, no matter where he was. Even when he wasn't in church, when we were out doing some ministry in the street, he would talk to people and he would tell them that story. And after a while, I started thinking about it. And I said to myself, you know, now that I think about it, that's his story. And that's his connection with God. And so I began wanting to understand how and why it was so important to him. And then it got to the point where I wanted to hear the story every time anyways. Because it strengthened me in a certain kind of way. He would testify to strangers, to people who were God-fearing people. He would testify that, he would say that same story to non-Christians. I've seen him tell that story to people on the street corner. Those who were filled with addiction and alcohol and drugs. And he would tell them that story. He, 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 he didn't take no Bible with him. He just told what God had done for him. And that impacted me in such a way that it kind of changed the whole outlook that I had. I mean, think about it. I, I'm telling you that story now, and it's been over 35 years since I heard it. But that's just how impactful his testimony was. When God revealed himself to the world, he didn't send down bookshelves full of outlines or theologies or lecture notes that people were supposed to read in order to get other people to understand who he was. It began with a story, a simple story, about Adam and Eve in a garden. And Moses wrote about this simple story and how it all unfolded and what it meant. And the Bible, if you read it enough times, is filled with some of the most powerful stories ever written. So it's not just a story book, though. It's a history book. It's a, it's a word that comes directly from God through people. And the funny thing about it is when you're telling folks about what God has done for you, they want you to answer all the questions that they have. And if you're not able to answer the questions that they have about God, then they don't believe in what you believe in because you didn't give them the answer they thought you should have. We are all a part of God's story. And we are God's testimony. We have a testimony 
that God, what God has done for us, but God has a testimony. And he wants us to know what it is. So he keeps telling us over and over and over again. If you're a believer, then you're also a part of God's story. As Christians, we are to repeat the story of God's love to others who need to hear it. See, there are some people right now that you know of that you know they need to hear God's story. You, you know it. There are some people that you walk with and you talk with that you know needs to hear what God has done for you. But see, sometimes we approach it as if, though, I, I, I can't do that because I don't have enough biblical knowledge. I don't, I, don't, I don't have that calling. I don't have that mark on my life. I don't have this or I don't have that. So yeah, I, 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 I can't do it. One of my favorite TV programs growing up was Perry Mason. Can I get an amen for Perry Mason? Okay. <laughs> and one of my most memorable parts of the show is the swearing-in ceremony. And I believe I must have heard this swearing-in ceremony over a hundred times. And it goes like this, and, and you might know this too for one reason or another. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you're about to give is true, the whole truth, and so help you God? So we've all heard that. So what does that tell us? That maybe we watch too much TV? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But it also tells us something about a testimony. You see, a testimony is where you are to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's the ideal behind a testimony. There is nothing else we need to understand about testifying other than the fact that we are to personally tell the truth. Not what we think, not what someone else has told us, but what we personally understand to be true. Testifying is all about what we know and has personally experienced to be true. Not what somebody else has told you. Not what somebody else believes. When it happens to you and you know it, then you can testify of it. Other than that, you're just swapping ignorance and telling other people what somebody else said. But when you know that you know that you know because it happened to you and you alone, then you know. Then you're able to testify. That's exactly what God expects from each of his followers, from each of us, to simply share what we know to be true about him. To testify to others of what God has truly done in our lives. Just a few minutes ago, you heard a testimony. And the effect of that testimony now becomes his and his alone to tell others, which is what he did this morning. And I thank you for that. Because each and every one of us has a testimony, but each and every one of us sometimes are too afraid to share it with others. We don't have to have the Bible memorized or be able to answer every question that someone might have about God. We only have to be willing to tell the story of what God has done in our lives. During his time on earth, that's exactly what Jesus did. 
A lot of us think that Jesus did a whole lot of other things, which he did in healings and so forth and so on. But the one thing that Jesus talks about more than any other thing in the Bible is the oncoming kingdom of his father. And he would testify of that. And when people didn't believe him, he says, okay, I'm going to do this just so that you might believe because that's the only way you'll get it. That's the only way you will understand it if I do something that you see with your own eyes. Lazarus, come forth. And when he walked out the cave, everybody went, oh, oh, yeah, he's Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they didn't realize that Jesus was only showing them what God had showed him. And what he wants us to be able to show others. During his time on earth, remember the fact when Jesus healed the blind man uh, and the people around him said, how can that be? You're a sinner. And, you know, I knew you were blind from birth. And how is it now that you can see because Jesus said so? That man said to them, he says, look, uh, rather I'm a sinner or not. But all I know is I once was blind. But now I see. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know, you know the, the problem that you're having with Jesus. But for me, I knew I was blind. I knew I couldn't see. So whatever you're talking about, I don't really care. I once was blind. But now I see. So it became personal to blind Bartimaeus. It was a personal testimony that he knew that God had done something for him that no one else could do. So whatever anybody else had to say about it, I don't know about all that. All I know is I once was blind, but now I see. How about the Samaritan woman? The individual who was out by the water well and Jesus walked up to her because no one else in the area would touch her or talk with her or be with her. And Jesus came to her and spoke to her and asked her for water out of the well and if you could give me that water, I'll give you water that you could live with forever. And then Jesus told her about her life. And she became shocked by the idea that here is a man that I do not know but knows me so well. So she got up and ran back into the village where everybody said, oh, whoa, 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 where are you coming from? Uh -uh -uh. You can't come in here. And she said to them, I know a man that knows me so well that has given me water that I will never thirst for. I know a man that knows more about me than I do about myself. I know a man that can take all the sins that are in your life and make them depart from you. I know a man. In her heart, she was convicted and knew that God himself touched her life. And that was her story. That became her story. I don't know about all the rest of that stuff y'all talking about. I don't know all the other stuff y'all thinking about. I don't know. I don't, and, and to be quite honest with you, I don't really care. But I know a man. I know a man that knows me. Knows my ups, knows my downs, knows when I'm not level to the ground. I know a man that I can talk to morning, noon, and night. I know a man. This, this, the disciples were simply ordinary men who told people the extraordinary story of Jesus working in their lives. Just that simple. Don't try to complicate it. Don't try to be this real big theologian. And 
that's not the purpose. That's not, you know, we, we create these evangelism programs and we, we put together so many ministries that are supposed to be about learning about Christ. We go to VBS and Bible study and, and that's all well and good. But let's be honest. Sometimes we're too ashamed to tell our story because we got some junk in our trunk. And we got some stuff that we don't want anybody to know because we don't want to air our dirty laundry. Or sometimes when people tell about the times in which you were not in God, that you are now glorifying the fact that you wasn't in God, but now God is in you. Instead of having a good testimony, we become too embarrassed or too ashamed of our testimony. If anything will mess up a good testimony, is getting trapped in our own minds about our own sins. There are times in which we believe that Jesus saved us. Yes, Lord, thank you, Lord. But then we can't express that to anybody else because now we're not supposed to be sinners. But we're all sinners, saved by grace. And no matter what happens to you today and no matter what you did yesterday, all you need to do is go back down on your hands and knees and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. And that's it. You're now wiped clean. But we get so embarrassed that I can't tell my friend that I'm a Christian now. Why? Because he's going to ask me questions that I don't know how to answer. Well, I'll tell you what. All I know is I know a man. All I know is I was blind. But now I see. All I know is I was hanging over the cliff ready to die. And God saved me. I got steel plate in my head, but these are the stories that doesn't require book Bible knowledge. It's personal. It's your knowledge. It's your understanding. It's your experience with God. How can we develop a powerful testimony? of what God has done in our lives. When our lives are riddled with sin that others can see. How can we witness and share our testimony with others when we're tore up from the floor up? In our text this morning, and I'll say this and I'll leave you alone. We find the disciples of Jesus in this text in the same fix. Jesus is preparing them to go out and do what he has called them to do, which is to share the good news. That's what gospel means, to share the good news. What good news, Jesus? What Jesus says is what I have done for you and what I will do through you. So Jesus calls the 12 together. And he says, you know what? I mean, he breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit. And that would allow you to fight off the evil ones. And he gave them power and authority to drive out demons and to cure all kinds of diseases. But then he said to them, now watch this, go back to the text. He told them to go out and preach the kingdom of God to people who will not hear you. He didn't say go preach to Christians. He said go preach the kingdom of God to those who basically will not hear you. Hmm. Then he gives them this off-sided kind of thought. He says... And take nothing for your journey. Don't take anything with you. Don't take no Bibles. Don't take no books. Don't take no extra clothing. Don't even take money. Just go. 
And I will be with you when you go. And I will stand beside you to listen to you tell your story of what I've done, not just for you, but what I'm capable of doing for them. Take nothing for your journey. You don't need to have a high polished testimony that you can spit out at the dime so you have to wind up honing what you're going to say. No, that's not what Jesus is asking you to do. Jesus is not asking you to fill yourself in your pocket so that when you go out there and people don't listen to you, you got a way to get back. No. When people talk about you and they lie on you and they rail all against you and they take from you and they do all the things that you are afraid because you don't want to go have that conversation with them. He says, don't take nothing with you. Take nothing for your journey. All I want you to take is what you know you and I have. Go tell the people and testify to them of my goodness. And those who will accept you, stay with them. Think about, stay with them. If, if they're hearing your testimony, walk with them. Your testimony ain't no better than their testimony because we're both testifying about the same guy. So you walk together and you talk together. You don't splinter and go off into your own because you've got this calling to do or you got that to do or you, you're now blessed and highly favored over someone else. No, no, no. Your testimony is your testimony of the goodness of God and so is mine. So let's walk together. Come, let us go together and talk to those who need to hear. Do they need to hear that you can quote the Bible? Do they really, in order for them to believe in God, they need to hear you be able to memorize a whole litany of information from the text? Or do they want to really want to know what you're thinking, what you feel about this relationship that you have with God? When it happens when the rubber meets the road and the problems are higher than what you're able to pay. Now what do you do? Now what do you say? Jesus says, don't take anything with you. And then he gives this really intelligent thing. Not from a spiritual sense, but from an intelligent sense. He says, when you go and they accept you, stay with them and walk with them. But if they don't believe you, you tell them, just how good God is, just how good God has been to you, and just how good God could be to them, and they don't want to hear it. I'm not telling you to do anything else but then just go. You, wh wh why we got to argue with someone to tell them how good God is? Here's the old saying, and if you don't know it, you'll know it now. Keep on living. Oh, God is good. God is good. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe that stuff, man. Okay, you know what? Hey, 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 look, look. You ain't got to hate him. You ain't got to throw him to the side, put him on the left. You ain't got to not walk with him. All you got to do is just. Knock that off and go, okay. But you know what? I still love you. I, I, I don't think you understand what I'm saying, but that's okay. Just knock the dust off your feet and keep it moving. It, it, does it say hate them? Does it say force them to go to Bible study? Does it say call them every day? Does it say give them guilt trips about when they are in church and when they're not in church? No, he don't say none of that. He just says, Knock the dust off and keep it moving. You know why? Because maybe you're not the one. Maybe you're not the one to tell them 
just how good God is. Maybe they haven't hit rock bottom yet and they don't understand that you got to look up when you're down. Maybe, just maybe, you're not the one to tell them. But there is somebody that's walking this planet that can touch their lives. Just like the minister who touched mine. Talking about a hole in his head. Where everybody else in the church is going, oh, here we go again. I'm going, I'm glad I heard that. So, so here's a couple things. One, now that you are seeking, maybe you don't have a real firm grasp on who God is to you in your life and what God is able to do for you. Maybe, maybe. Maybe you're thinking, I need to do more. Maybe. Maybe you're thinking, okay, I'm good, and I'm just trying to figure out what God wants me to do next. Maybe. Maybe you're just here because you think you're supposed to be here or because someone drug you here. But in any case, what the Bible is telling us and what Jesus is telling his disciples is when you go, go to do good. Don't go to do evil. Whatever, whatever you do. See, we, we, are, we are old enough, young adults, mature adults, we're old enough to know the difference between good and evil. Now, you can tell me that, uh, I don't know, what, you know, we can discuss it, we can debate it, but you know when you're wrong. You know when you don't know. So rather than trying to make something up and tell some other kind of story, it might be better to say, I don't know, but I know a man. Come on, somebody. I don't know about all that stuff, but I know somebody that I can go to to find the answer for. You see, and this is, this is how you testify. You don't tell everybody, make them think you know everything about God because there's enough people out here that will test you on every turn that you say or do as it relates to God because they don't want you to be smarter than them. But I don't care about all that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All I do know is he saved my life. Now, you change that. All I know is he saved my life. I don't care about all the rest of that stuff. And I'm telling you, he can do the same for you. That's the testimony. That's all you need. And if they accept it, good. And if they don't, bro, I love you anyways. Let's keep going down this street. Let's keep getting after it. So one thing, seek to do good. And whatever you do in your life. Seek to do the good thing. When you've got a choice between doing something good for somebody or not doing something good for somebody, listen, choose good. That's all, just choose good. It's better to overgive than to undergive. It's better to give than it is to receive. Just do good. How, how hard is it to do good when you know it's good to do? If you've got to wrap that around in your head, mm, maybe I should, maybe I should call them. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, but if I call them and they don't feel, I'm, just an answer about all that. Call them. If it's in your heart, he placed it in your mind and in your heart to do, call him. Well, I don't know quite what to say. Testify. I'll leave that up to you. The second thing that you have to understand about a testimony is that it has to be yours. Not what you heard from somebody else. It has to be yours. It has to be natural. It has to be authentic. Not something that you made up. Because if you make it up, then you have to what? 
remember it. See, that's the problem with a lie. That's why I try not, not my best not to lie. Because I don't have a good memory. I say one thing and then I come back and go, oh yeah, oh no, did I say that? No, if I don't know, I say I don't know. I don't remember, I don't remember. I plead the fifth. Because if you can't be authentic about who you are and be real with people and who you are, people automatically understand when you're not real with them. They got that little meter that goes up just like you do. Uh 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 uh, uh be not being real. And that's one, that's one of the major things that young adults have. Listen, older adults. Listen, mature adults. They have a BS meter. They know when you, they know when you fronting. And as soon as you start that and that meter goes up, what happens is it closes off all other information. They don't even, they're not even hearing you. Because they know when you're being authentic. They know when you're being hypocritical. Our young adults know that, old heads. But we because, and, and, and here's how I know that. Because when I was a young adult, that's exactly what I did. Hmm? So you got to be authentic. Be truly who you are. If it happened to you, tell it. And just tell it the way it happened. You ain't got to make nothing up. If you're still seeking, just say, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still seeking. That's a conversation. Next thing is, you got to understand this. A testimony is a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. When you allow God to work in your life, you'll find that there is a power in your life that drives you forward. And if God be for you, listen, if God, listen, if God Almighty be for you, who? Who can be against you? Who can defeat you if God be for you? Most people in this world ignore God's purpose for their lives. And the reason why they do it is because they're not quite sure if they're able to do what God is telling them to do. Most of us want to do what we want to do, and we want God to bless it. Oh, come on, somebody. We want to do what we want to do, and we want God to bless what we want to do. But sometimes, just sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes God goes, no, that's my testimony. I'm doing all these other things. And every now and then I get this tap on my back. And he say, ain't you supposed to be doing something else? No, uh, no, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm deaconing. I'm, I'm, I'm deaconing. A I'm couple months, couple years. Aren't you supposed to be doing something else? No, Lord, I, I'm teaching. I'm teaching the kids. I, I'm teaching. You know, that's a lofty goal. Lord, I'm teaching. What, Lord? Aren't you supposed to be doing something else? Lord, look, I'm coaching, I'm teaching, uh, I'm, you know, I got my family. Lord, I, I, you know, hey, I'm good. We good. Ain't we good? And it just kept going on and on and on and on. They said, okay, I yield. So, much so that I made the statement of preaching and a New Year's Eve watch night party at the church, and I didn't even know I said it, but my spirit yielded. The things that happen to us, that God, when God intervenes into your life, 
throw that off as casual. I'll throw that off as just something that just happened. Hmm. You got to remember that and use that power and remember that if God be for you, who can be against you? Keep your focus on the cross. Because Jesus was telling his people that soon I'm going to go away. And when I do, I'll send you a comforter so that you will not be alone. And this comforter will walk with you, talk with you, bring all things to your remembrance. But I've got to go and get on this cross so that you might have life. 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 You might have eternal life if you believe. It's just that simple. If you believe. So had it not been for the cross, your testimony would be null and void. But because of the cross, now you can say so. Now you can go run, run tell that. We run tell everything else about what we got and what we did. Go run tell that about how good God is. Remember, your testimony is not about what you've done. It's all about what God has done to you and through you. So what is left for us to realize is that we are no longer the people we used to be. But we are now the children of the Most High. And we should run tell that. Our testimonies will never be until we realize that we are no longer who we were. And it's because of God that we are different. We are no longer who we used to be when we accepted him because now he walks with us and he talks with us and he tells us all about his glories and riches and all he wants us to do is the exact same thing. We've been born again. Born out of our old life into a new life. We've been born again. We are now new creations. In Christ. And we need to start living like and sharing that with the world. Care who it is. One of the hardest things to do is to share your testimony with someone who does not believe you. But if you went back to Buffalo, New York, and tell somebody that I would be right here. They laugh in your face. So I know there's a God. So let us recommit our lives to Christ today. Let us be determined to stand for him regardless of the cost we must pay. If we I hear this morning have never spoken about the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary and how much of a difference it has made in your life. Make yourself a promise right now that you'll start today. Let us go and testify of just how good God has been. You can do it. You, you know what? We have plans for everything in our life. There's some of y'all that plan y'all very day down to the very minute. Say amen, somebody. You got your weeks and your month all planned out. You got your work schedule all planned out. You got your educational plan all etched out. You've got everything lined up, and it's all nice. You got it highlighted and colored and color-coded and numbered. You know exactly what you're going to do, where you're going to go, what you're going to wear, and what you're going to say. But when it comes down to telling somebody about Jesus, now all of a sudden we don't know what to do. 
So let's go and testify just how good God has been to us, how he has transformed our lives forever. Will you testify of him this morning? Is there somebody you can talk to this morning, this afternoon, about just how good God has been to you? Is there somebody that you're sitting next to or you're thinking about right now that you could just go have a conversation with them about Jesus? Not, not about church. About remnant. God already got that. God wants us to go talk to those for the upbuilding of his kingdom. I'm glad you're here. I love that you're here. But let's just not come here and keep our hearts and minds and souls here. The word says, go ye therefore. Teach the world. Go to the uttermost parts of the world. Everybody in here can tell somebody about Jesus. And that's all he wants us to do is what? Testify. Not test a lie. Not test the phony, testify. If he's been good to you, if you tell somebody, God will bless you. And you will know that you are blessed because he'll bring that back to your remembrance. And it could be anywhere from six months to 106 years old. Testify this morning. Go find somebody and tell them just how good God has been.